At noon on the 21st of October 1345, on a wooded hill near the castle of Oberosch, English archers eagerly awaited the signal to attack. Down by the river, a 7,000 strong French army besieging the castle was camped. The unsuspecting warriors had removed their heavy armour and were sitting around the fires, with woks hanging over the fire, cooking food. The sharp sound of a signal trumpet rang through the valley and a shower of arrows rained down on the camp. In 1337, a war broke out between England and France, the reason for which was the claim to the French throne of the English royal dynasty of Plantagenets. In 1345, Edward III planned to attack France from three sides, from Flandre, in Brittany, and in Gascony. The troops in the south were led by Henry of Gromont. On the 9th of August, the English arrived in Bordeaux and united with the Allies, moved eastwards in two weeks. At the end of September, after capturing the castle of Auberoche, Henry of Grossmont moved in the opposite direction to replenish supplies. In early October, the English received news that the French were besieging the castle of Auberoche. The Earl of Derby, with only 400 men-at-arms and 800 archers at his disposal, immediately moved to the aid of the besieged. Having previously sent a message to the Earl of Pembroke in Bergerac, demanding that he immediately gather his troops and come to the aid of the French. On the evening of the 20th of October, Henry of Grossmont approached the castle. The French had not realised that the enemy would be able to raise an army so quickly. The commanders had been careless and had not bothered to set up guard posts and reconnaissance detachments in time. Henry of Grossman managed to approach the castle undetected. Hiding his troops in the woods, he waited for Count Pembroke's approach. The Allied army was delayed and after waiting for the night and morning of the next day, Henry of Grossmont fearing that he would be spotted by enemy patrols, decided to attack, hoping to compensate for the small number of his detachment by surprise. At a council of war, the English devised a plan of attack, according to which the archers were to approach the enemy's camp stealthily from the west through a thickly wooded hill, while the cavalry was to take up positions to the south after waiting for a lunch break, when the enemy would be at rest and most vulnerable, the archers, on signal, would rain a hail of arrows on the enemy camp, causing confusion and panic. The cavalry then attacked, taking advantage of the confusion in the enemy ranks. The English warriors managed to sneak up on the enemy camp unnoticed. At lunchtime, the unsuspecting French removed their heavy armour laid aside their weapons and began to eat. Many relaxed on the ground, enjoying a temporary rest. When the moment was right, Henry of Grossman ordered the attack. The sound of a trumpet blasted over the valley, causing the French to flinch as they looked around in bewilderment, trying to understand what was happening. In the woods on the hill, could be seen figures of men in armour armed with bows. Suddenly a hail of arrows rained down on the camp. Many warriors panicked, stunned by the sudden attack. Chaos reigned in the camp, with men scrambling for shields and armour, and commanders scolding on all sides as they tried to restore order. At this time, a large cavalry troop appeared to the south, heading towards the camp. English banners were flying above the horsemen. Seeing a new threat, the French commanders tried to line up the army in battle order. A continuous hail of arrows mercilessly mowed down unprotected warriors. The lucky few who had time to put on armour joined in small groups preparing to fight back the cavalry. The unprotected warriors scurried around the camp in search of cover or fled eastwards towards the river away from the archers. 
As the English horsemen drew closer to the enemy, they lowered their lances and spurred their horses to rush at the enemy. The French, who had time to form a sparse line, waited in horror for the armoured horsemen to strike. Cavalry accelerated, rammed the weak defences and raced through the camp, wreaking havoc and destruction. Few pockets of resistance were quickly suppressed. And most of the army panicked and began to flee. The French still had two capable detachments, which were now taking an active part in the siege. The one to the south of the castle, having seen the defeat of the main army, turned round and moved towards the cavalry. During the pursuit, the horsemen broke up the ranks and moved in small groups, mercilessly destroying those who were fleeing. Seeing the enemy formation in front of them, the cavalry tried to attack it, but their unorganized actions were not successful. The horsemen could not strike a powerful blow in a dense group and were thrown back. Having regrouped, they were about to attack again, and at that moment, the cavalry from the castle struck the French in the rear. Stunned soldiers panicked and fled. The English cavalry in pursuit inflicted serious casualties on the enemy, and only a small French detachment in position to the north of the castle managed an orderly retreat. The English captured many noble prisoners, for whom they subsequently received a huge ransom. Henry of Grossmont managed to achieve significant successes with relatively small forces. After the battle, the French were forced to stop the siege of the Anglo-Gasconian garrisons, withdraw their troops and postpone the planned offensive, giving the initiative to the enemy, which subsequently allowed the Earl of Derby to seize significant territory 